I'm Jamie Francis. I'm a photographer with The Oregonian. This journey for me began with the death of Ryan Walker. Ryan's a soldier from Pendleton, and I was sent there to document how a small Oregon town is grieving over the loss of another soldier. Uh, what I discovered when I got there was that many of the families who had lost someone in the war were doing much more personal things to remember their son or husband or loved one. For example, Stephen Walker, Ryan's brother, invited me back to a bonfire that they were having in Ryan's honor. And the bonfire was almost festive. Um, there were fireworks that night. People were drinking beer and having fun and looking at pictures of Ryan. The friends and family who had gathered uh, felt this was the way that he would want to be remembered. That night at the bonfire, I met Jerry and Ann Stump. They had lost their son Adrian in Afghanistan a few months earlier. Uh, Jerry told me that later in the summer that he and Ann and some of their family were going to take Adrian's ashes into the mountains of northeast Oregon. They had all gone there uh, when, the, when the kids were young and they had planned to go there with Adrian when he came home from the war. As it turned out, they weren't let, ready to let go of Adrian's ashes, but they took 20 or 25 family and friends with them, and each one of them took something that belonged to Adrian. There was a watch, a flask, a hat, and on the third day of the trip, a Chinook, the same helicopter that Adrian was killed on. Uh, flew over because this is where they train and uh, everyone on the ground just looked up at the Chinook and uh, everyone waved and cried and I think in some level felt that Adrian was with them on this trip after all. I started looking for other families who had lost someone in the war and I found the Troyers in Tangent, Oregon. Their son Tyler had been killed in action in Fallujah and he is a lifelong baseball player, um, left-handed pitcher for West Albany High School. And the school upon hearing of his death had decided to name a baseball clubhouse for Tyler. And during the dedication, Michael, uh, Tyler's stepfather, said, as he stood looking at the letters on the clubhouse, he said that when he touches and looks deeply into these letters, that's when he feels like his son is there. I learned from Connie and Mike Loveless that sometimes when you lose a child that you find yourself doing things that you would never expect of yourself. And that's what happened to Connie. She had never been in a tattoo parlor in her life. Uh, but after losing Jeremy, she felt that this was one way that she could carry him in her for the rest of her life. And he was her youngest son. And as she told me after she got the tattoo, he was he was my baby boy, and I want him with me. Lynn Braddock comes from a big family in Portland, nine brothers and sisters. She says they've always depended on each other for support. When her son Travis was killed three years ago in Iraq, the family began gathering in Lynn's backyard. And on every 4th of July since, they have gathered in Travis's honor. Lynn told me everybody knows that this is Travis's day. When I asked Betsy Jeffries if she did anything in particular to remember her husband who was killed in Afghanistan, she got a little bit irritated with me. She said, I'm raising his son. I'm doing something every day for him. Betsy and Joe were married for five months. Uh, their son, baby Joe, just turned two. He has a portrait of his father above his bed, uh, but he's never known life with a father. Joni Kelly told me that she knew her son Brian wasn't going to come home from Iraq. She said that Brian knew it too. They had a talk on the steps of the Klamath Falls house before he left for his second tour. Now Brian's fellow Marines are coming back each year on the anniversary of his death to be with Brian's parents. This year they all went to the cemetery, took red, white, and blue balloons. They each wrote Brian a message and released them into the sky. Joni says that she could have written for days, but this year her message was, Brian, I miss you and I love you. Jeff Lucas is from Corbett, a small town outside of Portland. This year, more than a year after he was killed in Afghanistan, almost the whole town assembled on the football field where Jeff was a high school star. Kelly Riblioni was there 
wearing an American flag jacket. She said Jeff's death was a chance for her to talk to her son about the realness of war. I think it's easy to forget there's a war going on unless you have a loved one who is serving there. But for the people of Corbett, Jeff's death helps them remember.